Welcome to Trade.io's group demo. Just so you know that you're in the right place, this is a live demo and it happens every week on Thursday. I'm your host, Sandra Bautelar, and I'm on the marketing team. And I'm joined by my colleague, Chris Smith, who is a senior sales engineer here at Trade.io. Hey guys. Today, we will briefly cover the automation market and where it's moving. I will go over an introduction to the trade platform, uh, which will be followed by an in-depth look at a specific use case. Today, we will be learning how you can surface competitive intelligence data. We will finish uh, this session with a Q&A where we will answer any question you may have. So today, we will look at how we can surface competitive intelligence automatically using Gong, uh, Salesforce, and Slack. Like many other SaaS companies, we have a few competitors uh, that come up in discussions all the time with prospects. We use Gong to record sales calls for training purposes. So we created a workflow that listens to competitor keywords and triggers a message to a specific channel. Uh, the data can also be sent to Redshift and Salesforce so that the sales manager and anyone looking at that specific opportunity uh, can see who we're competing against. So basically what we're, what we're doing here, or what we will be doing is creating, building a workflow that connects Gong to Salesforce to Slack. And this is what we see internally uh, with a little bit more information. Um, uh, a Slack message, which has the opportunity name, the close date, the, a link to the Salesforce uh, account or opportunity, who's working the deal, uh, and, and other relevant information for the sales team or for, for the product managers, for product marketing, for a lot of different uh, people that want to see uh, all of our competitors, active competitors for all the deals. Uh, in real time. So I know you all want to see what this looks like and how you can start creating this process of surfacing competitive intelligence yourself. Let's jump into the trade platform with Chris, who will be leading today's demo. So as we get started, um, I have the Trey app up right now. And if anyone can't see this, uh, feel free to also ping the, ping the chat room. Um, this is what happens when you log in, you have a Trey account, you come into your dashboard, and Trey helps you to automate all sorts of different tasks and workflows that you have in your day-to-day -day job. And when you log in here, you would see the various workflows. For me, I have various things related to connecting to Airtable or GitHub or encoding various things, connecting to Amazon. And um, so those are the previous workflows I've worked on and I also have recent activity. So when these tasks have, have run and you might be wondering what a workflow is. So if we start to create a new one here, we can see a workflow is typically some task that you have that will be triggered off of something. And so um, when I create this, it'll give me an option to say, okay, what, what starts this workflow and it could be anything from a form being filled out it could be manually run by you it could be run like a cron job run um, every five minutes um, could be something receiving an email or it could be triggered by any number of other applications that you work with intercom mix panel salesforce etc and so today we're working off of one called the webhook and i'll just jump over to that and the webhook demo, what happens is we use Gong, as Xander mentioned, um, which is it listens in on calls, takes notes, and allows us to understand um, how, how our prospects are thinking about us, how they're comparing us to other competitors. And Gong will let you, um, it'll basically send a webhook to our service whenever a competitor is mentioned in a call. And so our product marketing managers, potentially our CEO, sales managers, we wanna know when are we losing deals, when are competitors coming up, how are customers thinking about us in comparison to those competitors. And what happens is when, when that comes up, we have a list of our competitors programmed into Gong. 
and that information will spin out to us via a webhook. And so whenever that happens, Gong will send us information and this workflow will be triggered. So when a competitor is mentioned, this webhook will go off. The webhook will have a, a schema of information that Gong sends, um, which looks um, something like, get to it here. It'll tell us number of records. Um, We'll just jump straight back into the demo here. And so whenever, whenever the competitor is mentioned, we'll check to see if, it's, if there's a Salesforce opportunity associated with it. And then we'll go to Gong and we'll look up the call. And so you might be wondering what, what, is, what is all this interface? So on the left-hand side, you see we have all the various connectors. And so this webhook one is, is one, the Gong connector is one. The connectors let us connect all the various functional building blocks of our workflow. So it could be mapping between different types of data. It could be Boolean branching based on, say, if there's CRM context. It could be connecting to any number of AWS web services like CloudFront or Lambda. It could be pulling in data from Salesforce. And each of these individual building blocks, if it's a third-party connector like Gong, for instance, you would add in your authentication. Chris, you know, what, what are we looking at in that Boolean connector? What, what is this uh, looking for specifically? So specifically what we're doing here is whenever the, the Gong um, service sends us information about a competitor being mentioned, it'll send whether there's a, a Salesforce opportunity connected to it or not. And so what we're doing is we're looking at a certain field in that data, in the body, in the context. And if the context is empty, basically, we will just pass it over altogether. And if it's true, then we'll say, okay, there's definitely going to be a valid opportunity, a valid call here to look up. So if there's information in our uh, Salesforce instance, then it goes to Gong. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, we go. Um, so if there's information, then we go to Gong, we look it up, and... Whenever you drop in any one of these connectors, it'll set up your authentication and you can then query to see all sorts of data from that service. So it could be things like getting users, getting call data for, for Gong. Um, if it's Salesforce, which is one of our most popular ones, it could be doing all sorts of things, finding records, counting records, deleting, updating users. And this is, this is one of the huge time savers for companies that are that, are, that have done any sort of integration work in the past is learning to navigate all of these different individual services and their APIs is a hugely time consuming, uh, consuming task. And the more and more of these services like Gong and Salesforce and Slack, each company is using, the more complex it gets to try and manage all of these individual integrations. And so Trey makes, abstracts away a lot of that complexity. And so you can just drop down a connector block like this We'll, we'll figure out what are all the functions you can do, how can you use this thing, and make it as, as simple as possible to get that data out. And Could so, we go through the each, each step here? So yep. we, uh, we're looking up the calls in Gong, we're filtering for competitors. What else are we doing here? So we'll filter for competitors, and then based on how many competitors are mentioned in that call, we'll loop through each of them individually, We'll get the ones that are saved in this, what's called a data store. So this is kind of like a variable. You can save data for, for the workflow run. We we'll concatenate those all together with this text helper. And there's, there's tons of various helpers here in Tray that help you say parse HTML or navigate date and times or do encryption or um, navigate phone numbers. All the various things you might get from various different data platforms, databases, um, a lot of times that data comes in and it's can be fairly complex to navigate. We make it easy with these simple building blocks um, that lets you do all sorts of things like concatenating, changing types, extracting other information. So we'll loop through each of the competitors. We'll filter to get the uh, Salesforce opportunity. 
And then we go and hit our Salesforce account and we look up that opportunity. And when we do that, we'll pull all sorts of things like the name, um, account IDs, owner IDs, if there's a sales engineer or not. And as we're doing that, we're building out our information about who, who, is, the, who, who is the company, who are the people that are interfacing with this account. And we build all that together and format it into a piece of text. And then we conditionally send that to a Slack channel. And so now what we have is like, Xander showed this, um, let's see, where is it here? This Slack competitor alert within our channel will have any time a sales call is happening, we'll have information about um, who the company is, what competitors were mentioned, um, who the owner of that account is, who the salesperson working on it. And we can get kind of a high level view of, of how often are we running into competitors. Um, and then from there, you can also decide to choose to send that data specifically to yourself. Um, but I'd like to pause here and ask if there's any questions, anything we can clarify on this so far. I see, I see some questions uh, coming in um, and we'll get to them soon. So if you have questions, uh, keep, keep adding your questions. We'll, we'll, um, we'll have you know, more time at the end, which will be uh, soon. Uh, to, to go over these questions. Um, but so you said there's, there's another workflow that we can show the audience. Yeah. Um, so once we have this message from uh, Gong with all of that relevant information, who the competitor is, who's working the, the deal, the size of the opportunity, uh, we can do something else on top of that. Yeah. So one, one thing that's really cool about integrating the way companies are using Slack these days and the way that the Slack API works and the way that Trey makes it easy to work with is that you can drop in a button that allows you to have two-way communication. So, so for instance, um, whenever the, a competitor is mentioned, we create a button in that uh, message and allow someone to receive more information directly to their um, direct message, basically to their person. And what happens when that button is clicked, we add a, a button into the Slack message. And um, this button then links out to another workflow. And so you can, you can create these various workflows that serve various um, processes in your business and then link them to other workflows. And so another workflow that we want to run is one that receives that button click and then it looks up competitors from a Google Sheet and then whenever we um, look up the competitors in that Google sheet, we want to map that to a competitive brief we have on each of those competitors. And so if, uh, if someone across the company is looking at these competitor mentions, they want to pull up, okay, well, how does Trey compare to those competitors? What are the things we need to be speaking about in terms of the comparison? What should I be thinking about as I start to research this competitor? And then we'll pull in the script connector that lets us uh, dynamically pull out some information, just dropping in JavaScript if you're a more technical user. And then we send that message directly to the user. So this is where uh, product marketing managers also get involved because they're usually responsible for competitive intelligence, competitive reports. Um, and so what this does is arm the sales team with um, uh, information presentations that they can use when they're, uh, you know, up against a competitor. So it's a, it's a really cool uh, workflow that we've built um, internally um, and that pretty much anyone can use using Slack, uh, Google Apps, uh, Salesforce, and Gong. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again for joining our weekly group demo and we will see you next week. Thanks everyone. Bye.